In this scenario, I'm going to show how SharePoint and InfoPath can be used in a retail situation to manage stock levels. The manager of a shop can go to a dashboard to see a summary of information about their shop. Here we have some average sales figures displayed with key performance indicators. Below this, we have a graph of sales averages for various products, and we have a table to do with stock levels. But it's this area we're interested in for this demo. This is a web part which lists stock levels which have dropped below a specific amount. As the store manager, I can see as soon as I log into the portal page that the stocks are too low. I don't have to wait until a customer tries to buy something we haven't got. Now that I know we have a shortage, I can click one of these items. I get taken straight to this InfoPath form to order new stock. Let's assume that I'm the manager of the London branch. I type that in and automatically the form fills out the rest of the details. Now I'll enter a product ID number. I get the name of the product entered for me, so I just have to add a quantity. The form checks to see whether there's enough of the, that product in the local warehouse. You can hook these forms up to SharePoint workflows so that the number I order can be deducted from the quantity available in the warehouse, so the same products aren't ordered by people in two different places. I can use the repeating section feature to order multiple products. And then I can place my order. That's the role of the store manager done with for the time being. Now someone from the warehouse logs into their portal. Here we see a list of tasks for the warehouse team. There is one task which is to do the delivery of the products that have just been ordered. In this demo, the task has been automatically assigned to a person, but you could add rules to the workflow to check individual task lists and assign the job to whoever has the least tasks, or a smaller number of high priority tasks. The workflow can dynamically assign work to whichever employee is most suitable to do the job. So this is where the warehouse worker sees their task. They can open up the form to get more details if necessary. In this case, the form opens up in InfoPath. If I didn't have InfoPath installed on the computer, it would open up in a browser. This is a simple demo, so the process here is just for the warehouse worker to mark that they have sent the product and add any issues. In a real-world implementation, you might want to have a sub-workflow here about printing shipping labels, handling the packaging materials, organising lorry routes and so on. For now, I'll just say that the products have been sent without issues, and I'll submit the form. Back on the portal page, the order is now listed in the completed order list. The store manager will be able to see this list to track the progress of their orders. I can open up the form again, and now we get the details about who performed the shipping. You'll notice that I didn't enter this information. InfoPath automatically worked these things out and added them to the form, making the process of recording progress much simpler. In a similar way to the holiday request scenario I've already shown, it would be possible to add a delivery date to a store calendar. We could use KPIs to track the number of completed or incomplete orders. The form records the time the order was placed and the date the products were shipped. This is stored in SharePoint and could be analysed to discover potential inefficiencies in company processes. You can store and manage the order forms using SharePoint's content management capabilities. So a wide range of SharePoint capabilities can come together to give you smooth and efficient processes.